Hi everyone, I'm Maggie Weldon from Maggie'sCrochet.com and in this video we're going to show you how to make either the afghan or the pello. So if you're watching the video for the afghan, make sure you watch the video for the pello and vice versa. This um, was designed years ago and it was featured in Crochet Fantasy Magazine and it was done in a red and green and white color combination and they called it a Christmas wrap afghan. So we chose to do it in a bulky white yarn and now I'm going to call this one an icy snowflake afghan. But I'll put both um, photographs on the um, blog post that matches the, uh, these videos and I'll show you the pictures for both versions. And one version was done in worsted white yarn and we give the instructions for that and then the other version was done in the bulky white yarn and that's what you see here. So the difference in size is that your finished bulky weight afghan would be 50 by 62 and your finished uh, worsted weight will be 41 by 51 or around there. And then your pillow is going to be, um, you know, the same proportions. So um, right now we're going to take you to a close up and Christina is going to show you how to make these squares. Thank you very much for watching and make sure that you subscribe to our channel. Hey everybody, it's Christina from Maggie'sCrochet.com. Today I'm going to show you how to make the Christmas wrapping afghan. Uh, there's also a pillow that matches this, but I'll show you how to do that in another video. Today I'm going to show you how to make one of the uh, squares for this afghan. You're going to need a total of 20. As you can see here, they're worked in the round. We'll start in the center, work our snowflake, and then work the a background color around them. Um, I think this blue is really pretty. It make, looks like snowflakes against a night sky to me. I'll be using a lighter color today. It should be a little bit easier for you to see. Um, but it's pretty with the white and the blue. It would be pretty with um, maybe reds or greens, make it look a little more Christmassy. Um, lots of different color options for you to choose from. The cool thing about this pattern is you can choose to do it with either a worsted weight or bulky weight yarn. This sample here and what I'm going to be showing you today are the bulky weight versions. Um, I like the bulky weight, it's a little works up a little quicker um, and it, your end product is going to be a little bit bigger too. With the bulky weight yarn, our finished afghan will be about 50 inches by about 62. If you choose to use the worsted weight, it's going to be about 41 inches by 51 inches. So uh, just depending on what you are going for, you know, you may choose to do the worsted weight or the bulky weight. If you're doing the worsted weight, you'll need a size I9 crochet hook. With this bulky weight yarn, you're going to want a size P crochet hook. So I'm going to show you how to make this one afghan block. Um, and then I'll talk you through sewing them together and then make sure you look for the other video as well where I show you how to do the pillow cover. You'll begin each snowflake block by chaining eight, which I've already got here, and then we're going to join this with a slip stitch to form a ring. So I'm going to take my hook, go back to that very first chain stitch I made, I'll insert my hook into there, grab a loop, pull it through, and pull that loop through the loop already on my hook. And that makes a nice big ring for me to work the rest of my stitches into. Then I'm going to chain three. And those three chain stitches we're going to count as a double crochet now and throughout the rest of the pattern unless it tells us otherwise. So that counts as one double crochet. And then I'm going to do 23 more in the middle of this ring. So I'm just going to yarn over like this. Go right down into the middle of that ring, grab a loop, pull it through. At this point I have three loops on my hook, yarn over and pull through two, and then yarn over and pull through the last two. So there's one double crochet. Again, I'll yarn over, go down into the ring, grab a loop, pull it through, yarn over and pull through two loops, yarn over and pull through two loops. So counting my chain three, I want to have a total of 24 double crochets in this ring. Now as I go, they're going to kind of fill up the ring. I may look like I'm running out of space, but one neat thing you can do, you can always grab the last stitch you worked in one hand, grab the empty ring in the other, and you can squish your stitches together if you need more room. Right now, of course, I have plenty, but 
before I get to this row, I might find myself needing to kind of squish my stitches together to fit the rest of them in. And if you squish them too tight, don't worry, you can always slide them back out the other way, just like that. So I'm going to do 20, 21 more double crochets until I have a total of 24, including this chain right here. I'll come back and show you how to move on and how to do round two. So here are my 24 double crochets and here at the end of the round I'm going to join with a slip stitch to my first one. And again that very first double crochet was your chain three. So I'm just going to take my hook go right into the top of those three chains. Grab a loop, pull it through, pull that same loop through the loop already on my hook and that kind of closes off my round. Now for round two we'll start by chaining three kind of gets us up on the level of the next round and in that same stitches joining right here you can see how uh, that one stitch just kind of pulled it out like that so in that same stitch right there we're going to do a double crochet and then chain two and then do two more double crochets in that same stitch again one and two. Just like that. Now we're going to skip the next two double crochet, so one, two, skip those, and in the next one we're going to do a shell. Now shells are the kind of stitch that it's going to depend, um, it's going to be different in every pattern, so be sure you check your pattern notes to see exactly what it means by a shell. Now in this case it means two double crochets, chain two, and then two more double crochets all in the same stitch. So there's one double crochet, two double crochets, chain two, and then two more double crochets still all in that same stitch. Just like that. And then we're going to keep doing that. We'll skip the next two stitches and then in this next one we'll work a shell. Two doubles, two chains, and two doubles all into that one stitch. So when we get back around to the beginning we should have um, a total of eight shells including this first one here. We should have a total of eight of those. And we'll just join with a slip stitch again to that first chain three there. So that's going to be round two. Uh, round three is very similar. I'll come back and show you round three just because uh, it's got one little tricky thing in it. But round two is just uh, doing these shells around. So I'm going to finish this round, come back and show you round three. So here we are at the end of round two. It doesn't quite look like a snowflake yet, but we're getting there, I promise. So at the end of round two, I went ahead and joined with a slip stitch, just like I did before. And now for round three, I'm going to start by slip stitching to the first chain two space. So my yarn right now is attached here, but I want to start working in this chain two space. So I'm going to slip stitch in the next double crochet. So I'll just go right into the stitch like usual, grab a loop, pull it through, pull that loop through the loop already on my hook and then go under that chain two and do another slip stitch just like that. That way my yarn is over so I can start working in the middle of the shell. And then it's pretty much the same thing as round two. I'll start by chaining three, do a double crochet, two chains and two doubles in the middle of this shell. So it comes out looking like the rest of our shells. Just we started with that chain three. And then we're going to work another shell in the middle of the next shell. Uh, first you'll chain two, just to kind of bridge the gap, and then we'll start working into this shell right here. And then we'll do that all the way around. Chain two, shell in the next shell. Chain two, shell in the next shell. And then when we come back around to the beginning, we'll chain two 
and join to that first chain three. Now round four, it's very similar again. You're going to, uh, we'll start by again slip stitching to the middle of the shell. But then in round four, we're going to do, instead of just our normal shell, we're going to do a shell number one. Again, this is listed up at the top uh, in the special stitches. It's the same thing, only instead of two doubles, we're going to do three. So after I finish round three here, I start round four, I'll slip stitch to the center of this shell. I'll chain three. I'll do two doubles, two chains, and then three doubles in this space. Chain two. And then when I get to the next shell, I'll do three doubles, two chains, and three doubles all in one shell. So it's just getting a little bigger as we get further from the center. So I'm gonna finish round three here. I'll do round four, and then I'm gonna come back and show you round five, because round five is, is a little bit different. Um, so I'll do that, and then I'll come back and show you how to move on. So here's our snowflake after round four. Now I'm just going to walk through the rows real quick for you. Round one was our 24 double crochets in the ring. Round two, so we did a shell in every third double crochet around. Round three, we did a shell in the middle of each shell and two chains in between shells. And then for round four, we did shell number one which instead of two double crochets on each side was three double crochets on each side. And we still have the two chains in between each set of shells. So it's gonna look a little bit like that. At the end of round four, you can finish off your white or whatever color you're using for your snowflake and go ahead and grab your other color and get that on your hook with a slip knot. And we're going to join this new color with a single crochet to um, one of the shell spaces. So just pick out any shell and in the middle of it is where we're going to join. And we're joining with a single crochet. So take your hook, go right under that chain there, grab a loop, pull it up. You've got two loops on your hook. You're going to pull through both. And that way we're nice and joined. It's nice and secure. And that also counts as our first single crochet. I'm going to do two more single crochets here in the same space. So we'll have a total of three, including our first joining one there. So there's three single crochets. Going to single crochet in each of these three doubles. One, two, and there's three. We're going to single crochet in the chain two space right here. And then it's going to get a little tricky. We're going to chain two. One, two. Single crochet in the chain two space of row three, round three. So this was round four. Round three is right here. So we're going to jump down and single crochet around this little chain right here. So just hold that with your thumb and your middle finger, single crochet right around that, like that. Then we're going to chain two, and we're going to go down to the row right below that, row two, and single crochet right in between these two shells as well. Then remember, there is no chain between shells there, so we're just going to go right and on in between them. So we've made this line coming down between our shells like that. Then we'll chain two again, and now we're going to work back up. So we'll chain two, single crochet around this chain two here from round three. This is what makes this project intermediate, just the working in different rows. Chain two, and then single crochet in that same chain two space on round four. So we've created this kind of V or just a little bump down into, and that's what separates the, um, our, that's what separates our snowflake and keeps it from being just a circle. It gives it uh, all the little fingers sticking out. So once you're back up here, we're gonna single crochet in each of these three doubles.
and then we'll do three singles in the chain two space here. Again, just go right under that chain, work your singles, and we'll just do this all the way around. So next, we'll single in each of those three doubles, single in this chain space, chain two, single in this space, chain two, single right here between these two shells, chain two, come back up, single around this chain two, chain two, come back, single around this one, and then work across the doubles just like that. And that kind of helps shape your snowflake. So this is round five. I'm gonna finish working all the way around, then I'll come back and show you how to uh, move on. And we've gotta start turning the circle into a square. So that's gonna happen when I come back. So we finished round five. We've gone all the way around our snowflake, giving it a little bit of definition. Now for round six, uh, we'll go around again, and this is the round where we make the corners that turn our circle-y sort of snowflake into a square. So go ahead and pick up your work. We're going to, uh, so we joined with a slip stitch there in that first single crochet. We're gonna slip stitch in the next one, and that puts us in the middle of those three single crochets. So we're right in the middle of this point of our snowflake. Let's start by chaining one, single crochet in the same space, right there in the middle of the snowflake point. Then we'll chain three, two, three. We're gonna skip all these single crochets and we're gonna come here to this chain two from round four. On round five, we, uh, we worked on it some. We had a single crochet here, then we went down, came back up and single crocheted around it again. So now working between those two single crochets, we're gonna do three double crochets. This is not the corner, this is the, um, the side of the square. So three doubles right here on this little chain space. There you go. And we'll chain three. Skip the next five single crochets, so that's the one here on the chain two space, the three that were on top of the doubles, and one of the ones here uh, in the middle, and we'll single crochet in the next one. And that ends up being, again, the middle one of the three here at the point of our snowflake. So single crochet right there in the middle one. We're gonna chain three again. And again, we're gonna work into the uh, chain space from round four, but this time we're going to do um, some double treble crochets. So if a treble is larger than a double, a double treble is even larger than a treble. And this is what's gonna make our corner. So for a double, you wrap around once. For a treble, you wrap around twice. And for a double treble, we're gonna wrap around a third time. So we have three loops on our hook there. Then you'll go under the loop, grab a loop, pull it up. At this point, you're gonna have five loops on your hook. And I'm gonna yarn over and pull through two at a time until I only have one loop left. So I'll yarn over, pull through two, pulling through two, and then there's my last two. So that's one double treble stitch. I'm gonna do two more. So yarn over three times, go under the chain two, grab a loop, pull it up, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over and pull through two, and one last time. So we need one more of those. Speeding up a little bit now. And then we'll chain three. Now guys, if I ever go too fast in a video, you can always slow it down. Um, down in the right hand corner of your video, there's a little gear button, and that's settings for the video. And if you click on that, then there's um, a speed option, and under that speed, you can slow down or speed up the video. Um, and you're probably gonna wanna slow it down and not speed it up. But you have the option of taking it down to half speed or quarter speed. Though if you take it down to quarter speed, the audio gets a little distorted, so I don't recommend that uh, unless it, you just really, really need it slow. But half speed, usually, you can still understand fairly well. So you may want to try that if you ever uh, need me to slow down a little bit. So now I've worked all in the same uh, little chain two space. I've worked three double trebles. I chained three 
and then I did three more double trebles. And that is what forms our corner. See these, uh, get where you can see it, these doubles here just kind of fill in, they kind of straighten out the side, and these double trebles make our corner. It's a little lumpy right now, don't worry, the next round will uh, help smooth things out a little bit, so don't worry if it looks a little lumpy right now. So now I'll chain three. <coughs> Excuse me. Again, I'm going to skip those five single crochets and single crochet in the center one of those three, right at the top of my point. And then I'm just going to repeat that. I'll chain three again. Here I'll do three doubles, chain three, single crochet in the top of this point, go around. I'll have another corner here with my three double trebles, chain three, three double trebles, and continue around like that. Now, round uh, seven, when you look in your pattern, you'll see that there are two different versions of round seven. There's the version for if you're doing worsted weight, and there's the version for if you're doing the bulky weight yarn. Really, the only difference between these two is that um, with the worsted weight versions, we're assuming that you're going to change colors. So it tells you to finish off your yarn at the end of round six, and then round seven starts by joining your third color to the corner. Um, of your snowflake. For the bulky weight version, it's assuming you're keeping the same color. So for me, I'd be keeping this same yellow color for the next round. But they both look the same once you get them done. So I'll be doing the bulky weight version where I keep the same color. Uh, again, the difference if you're doing the worsted weight version, if you're changing colors, you're going to start in the corner. You'll join your new color with a slip stitch into this corner chain three space. Me, I'm going to end up, because I started in the middle of the uh, of a row, I'm going to start round seven in the middle of a row too, instead of starting in the corner. So I'm going to finish round six here. I'll come back and show you round seven, um, the bulky weight version where I don't change color, but like I said, it's pretty much the same thing. I think you'll be able to pick it up uh, even if you are changing colors. So I'm going to finish uh, round six and I will be right back. So at the end of round six, uh, your snowflake should be a little more square. You can see here, here's one of our corners, those double trebles um, stick out nice and give us a nice corner to work into. So again, this is bulky weight version uh, round seven. Worsted weight round seven is very similar. You just are starting at the corner instead of uh, along the side. So from here, I'm going to chain three. I'm going to do two double crochets in this chain three space. One and two. Next up are those three double crochets. I'm going to do a double crochet in the top of each of those. Two and there's three. Then two double crochets in the chain two space, chain three space rather. I'm going to do one double crochet in top of the single here. Two in the chain three space here. Then we come to um, our double trebles. So we've got three here. We're going to do a double crochet in the top of each of those. One, two, and three. And then in the corner, we're going to work shell number two. Yes, there's another kind of shell in uh, this pattern. Shell number two is two doubles, three chains, and two doubles all worked into the same space. So after I finish uh, my last double and top of the last treble, I'm just going to go again right under that chain three space, work two doubles, chain three, and then work two more doubles. 
and that's how you turn the corner. Then I'm just going to continue down the side. I'll work a double on top of each of these double trebles, two in the space, one in the single, two in the space, one on top of each of these doubles, two in the space, one in the single, two in the space, one on top of each of these trebles, and then shell number two in the corner space. Now, if you're doing the worship rate version where you changed colors, you'd be joining here in the corner. You would chain three, that would take the place of this double crochet. Then you would double chain two, two doubles on the corner, so you'd have just that. And then you do the same pattern down the side, double in each of the double trebles, two in the space, etc. down, and uh, the rest of it would be the same. You do the shell in the corners, all the way back around, uh, and then join with a slip stitch. Round eight is the same for both versions. Uh, wherever you end up, you're going to chain three. You'll do two double, you'll do a double in top of each double. And when you get to the corner, chain three space, you'll do shell number two in there again. So two doubles, three chains, and two doubles. And then one double per stitch around. And that's all that round eight is. And after that point, you can finish off your work and weave in the ends. Now, you're going to make 20 blocks for the afghan. And then uh, you'll arrange them uh, in a four by five uh, arrangement f for the afghan. And to sew them together, you're going to want to get a yarn needle. Um, I like the ones with the really big heads like this. It's a nice big head. You can fit um, a nice big strand of yarn through. You'll lay your two snowflake blocks right side up next to each other. And using your yarn needle and a matching length of yarn, you're just going to kind of whip stitch the back loops of each piece together. So as I'm looking at this here, there's two loops. I'm going to only go through the loop closest to the other snowflake. So this back loop here. And on this side, only the one loop closest to this block. So pick up one loop from each and just kind of whip stitch them together. Let me show you the finished afghan so you can see what I'm talking about. So here's our finished afghan in our white, blue, and purple. And right here, here's our one of our seams. You can see it fairly well right here because the yarn they used to whip stitch together was purple at this point. That's one thing about using variegated yarn is sometimes it's easier to see your stitches because it changed colors even though it's the same yarn. This ridge right here and this ridge right here are those front loops, the ones we didn't pick up. So we only picked up the back loops and just kind of went under them and whip stitched them together like that over and over up like that. So uh, you'll want to do four columns of five or five columns of four, it doesn't really matter, and then sew them together. And then your border is very simple. You're just going to go around the edge, double crochet in each stitch. You have an extra one here where they join in the middle. So you've come along doing a double in each stitch, did one in the corner, one in the middle where they joined, one in the corner, and then you can continue doing a double down. And in the corners, we did that shell number two again, two doubles, three chains, and two doubles all in the same stitch. So that's your border. Well, guys, I hope this video has been helpful to you. If you have questions about this project, you can uh, certainly ask them down in the comments. Um, be sure to look out for the other video where I show you how to assemble the pillow. It's made with the same snowflake block, um, but I'm going to show you how to uh, sew it together because there's a few uh, tips and tricks to that. Be sure to subscribe to our channel so you don't miss that video and all the other new ones we have coming out. Um, and I think that's about it. Thanks for watching, guys. So I'm going from this side to that side, and I'm going to pick up my yarn and draw that up and then finish my double crochet like so if you do let's say I've seen scarves made with only pulling five loops through and they look amazing they're really cute they come out